carts and Safeways and Targets and the white guys are going up killing little sweet Indians with pink flowers. Most of the tribes were mega savage, would kill the men and the women and take your children if you were lucky, uh, just enslaving other native tribes. I mean, it was hardcore. Look at the Aztecs south of us. They came as far north as, you know, up into South Texas grabbing people for sacrifice. Uh, so humans are humans, different cultures, do different things for different periods, but we're pretty much all the same at the end of the day. And this movie actually goes a long way towards showing some of that. Uh, and it, it shows both sides. It kind of leans towards the natives, 2 or 3%, but it's not like 90% leaning. Uh, so I want to say good job to the director, good job to Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, good job to uh, the other actors. Uh, the bad guy does a great job in the movie. Uh, so I'm impressed uh, with this film. I, I, I have no stock in it. Obviously, people, some will say, why are you promoting something when you're a political show? Well, all art is political. And we more and more are going to be covering art some because that's where the real propaganda is going on. And we want to reward good art, more accurate art from our perspective, by promoting it and by supporting it. And then we're going to attack stuff that's garbage and filth. Okay, so that's what it comes down to. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you can get six months free at PrisonPlanet.tv, but only for one more week. Next Monday, the special that only comes around once a year ends. In fact, we've never offered six months free before, but I really want to get more people to join and to be able to watch the nightly news, to see the live reports we do, the special reports, all my films, ebooks, and so much more. One person can share their membership with 20 people, and you are funding the absolute, very leading edge, the vanguard of the resistance to the globalist operation on every front. We have to have our own platform that is harder for them to censor, harder for the system to shut down. PrisonPlanet.tv. We put out the daily radio show free with the video and audio feeds at InfoWars.com forward slash show. But it is the members that get the nightly news exclusively and first and the commercial free video podcasts and audio podcasts that are paying it forward and financing and helping so many other people see the truth when we put the videos on Facebook, YouTube, and it's PrisonPlanet.tv that finances so much of the cameras, the equipment, the crew, the reporters. You are becoming a PrisonPlanet.tv member. You get exclusive HD, higher quality, get it first, and then you can download it, share it with friends and family, share your passcode with them, your username. It's a win-win, and then you're helping finance to put it out for free to everybody. PrisonPlanet.tv. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new, groundbreaking, gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited-time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. A psychology professor recently taught his students about who the real terrorists are. That's right, conservative white men. And these are the type of people we always think of being like really against terrorism. Most are, but these are also the people who kind of fall off the, the wayside, probably do the things like mental illness, and then do things that you know, are called terrorists and are terrorists. So this psychology professor was couching his statements in a lesson on heuristics, which is what he defines as a mental shortcut that allows people to solve problems and make judgments quickly. He was essentially making the argument that many Americans wrongly believe Muslims make up the vast majority of U.S. terrorists because they haven't thought long and hard on the matter. Ironically, this lesson took place in mid-October, which was just a few weeks before UC Merced student Fasel Mohammed stabbed four people on the Northern California campus, so same school. And after his rampage, Muhammad was found to have an image of an ISIS flag, a handwritten manifesto with instructions on how to behead someone, and reminders to pray to Allah. But authorities have said that his motives 
were grounded in revenge for being kicked out of a study group. Ah, because you know what? <laughs> who would who would want to kick a, kick a guy like that out of their study group? You know what I mean? Just a disgruntled student wants to you know write down this instructions on how to behead people. And now the students who actually recorded this video, they did so secretly, anonymously, and they didn't even release it to the college fix until after they received their grades from this instructor. Because of course, you are not allowed to question the state propaganda. You know, it's a thought crime to disagree. And this is kind of what's going on in schools. Well, you know, here's another video coming out from O'Keefe. He strikes again. Common Core Sting captures an executive saying the program is a scheme to sell more books. That sucks. Sell more books. And then we have to learn something new. And the student, it's like bullshit. It's all about the money. What are you, crazy? It's all about the money. You don't think that the educational publishing companies are in it for education, do you? No. They're in it for the money. The publishing companies are the winners in this game. So of course, that's a great video, but it's only part of the truth. Now, I'm going to remind you about the full story with my interview with liberty activist and libertarian candidate Lily Tang Williams. She has a dire warning for America, and she escaped communist China, and she wanted to warn the world about how Common Core reminded her of the communist core that she went through in China. Lily, thank you so much for joining me today. And I just wanted to get right into it because I think that your story is so important to tell because we definitely can see that there's a slow creep of tyranny happening here in America. For some, it's so slow that they don't even recognize it if they even want to believe it's happening at all. But you are, you've lived through it. And that's why I thought your story was just so important. So what was it about Common Core that raised the red flags for you? Well, I got into um, more research on Common Core uh, last year when I became the Libertarian candidate for our House District 44 in Colorado. The more research I dig into, the more scared I become. And just to, based on two principles, one is top-down, centralized government control, nationalized education, nationalized standards, and then that will lead to nationalized assessment and indoctrination, the curriculum. And that's number one. Number two really scares me is that the data tracking collection of our children and starting as early as a kindergarten, preschool, then we'll follow them to college and to the future employment. And that's exactly what I went through in China. And I, that's why I started to come out to say, hey, this just remind me the China communist education I had under Mao. And I was very scared. I feel like it's my moral obligation to tell people the truth. Right. And this is something that we actually are hearing. A lot of parents are concerned uh, about these files that are being built on, on students, that it can obviously follow them throughout their uh, school careers, but also employers might be able to look at these files. And that's exactly what you've experienced. Talk to me a little bit about these files. I know you mentioned that they, uh, the schools force you to keep a diary where you're basically uh, tattling on your family or friends and anyone that might have a dissident opinion. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about that. So if there's any parents out there that are getting some of these, uh, we reported uh, earlier this year about a, an assignment that students were given. They had to go home and check their medicine cabinet and then write in the assignment what was inside their parents' medicine cabinet. Uh, so this is obviously very indicative of these personal diaries that you, you talk about uh, having to keep. Well, I was born before Cultural Revolution. So, you know, then I went through the entire 10 years most Cultural Revolution in schools. When I started my first grade, and we we were chanting every day, required by teachers like "Long live Chiang Mao," "Long live Chinese Communist Party." I love my country. Then the teachers want us to and uh, write a so-called red diary, which is not private. It's the one that you're supposed to be political correct and turn them over for teachers review. In your diary, they want you not to just to talk about your incorrect behaviors, but they do want you to tell them about other people you know, including your neighbors, friends, family members, any incorrect behavior, speeches, even thoughts. We had to do self-criticism about our thoughts. 
on political stuff. I, we were so young, we didn't understand. So I quickly learned, I better not turn in my private diary to teacher. I will turn in the correct one. And this, this diary, we supposed to encourage you to tell a teacher what's going on in our lives, in our neighborhood. And uh, then we had to quote mouth, share my mouth quotations once in a while to show us we are really on the target. And that's really sick because I see that happening in this country where people are encouraged to report on their families and their life and uh, to be politically correct, to conform what the government wants you to do. And neighbors call police, uh, report on each other. It, it's just really sick. I went through that. I can see clearly what they're doing in this country. Right. And then with this household registration and then you have this personnel file, this is then passed along to whatever uh, government corporations people are going to then be kind of funneled through where you were just one of three people selected to be able to go and work uh, in the law field. Right. So if you had messed up, you would have just been sent back to live in poverty. Yeah, my file followed me since first grade. In this file, my family information, my siblings, and uh, my political beliefs, my uh, family's political class. So they classify people in the red uh, versus black classes. And uh, and they know exactly where you live, where your family is from, what do they do, their political beliefs, their religious beliefs, and if they have any disciplinary actions and my grades, my behaviors, my psychological profile, my mental health, all that details is in my file. We have to take updated picture once a year. And that file follow me to middle school, high school, and college. By the only time I broke that tracking system is by coming to United States. Then they threatened me, you got to sign this piece of paper before you leave. You promise come back to your motherland. All your personal file will be sent back to your hometown in Chengdu, Sichuan province. That means I will lose my professor career in law school in Shanghai forever. I will start fresh when I go back. And also there's always dark shadow there to say I left the country, did not go back on time. It's really that kind of tracking system to um, keep you under control from birth to death. And that's communist system. I, I will hate to see that happen in this country. Right, and it absolutely already is happening in this country. And we already have, uh, you know, they're lauding uh, China for their restrictions on the internet. And again and again, they're just saying, wow, the Chinese are just doing a really good job there, I guess because they see how high the test scores are. But children are not standardized, but they're forcing them into this standardized form of testing. Uh, we actually have a story of an Ohio uh, high school teacher. She won the 2014 Top Teacher Award, and then she resigned uh, at that ceremony, basically saying that she just couldn't she couldn't stand how Common Core was leaving children with special needs behind. And that's exactly what would happen for a student in China. If you're having some issues, you're just going to get, if you can't pass these tests, you're done for. Yes, yeah, so we have a nationalized college interest exam once a year. That's like a really once a lifetime opportunity for you to go to college. Thanks for watching the show tonight. We'll see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.